tremendous. You are now about to witness the strength of cave music. Welcome to the cave cast, sucker! Dark Lord Cthulhu 2015, and you are listening to the Cave Cast. I'm Admire. Um, this is episode 36. We're 36 episodes into it. Uh, just a Rain God's Cave Cast today. Just Monk and I in the house. <sighs> Pretty vacant. <laughs> it's such an empty room. Um, well, uh, we got. Oh, we have a special guest later on in the later on in the afternoon. Also, that uh, will be a surprise. To liven the party up. Yeah, <clears throat> bringing the party starter. Um, and also here in a little bit, we're going to uh, take a phone call from a friend of mine, Justin Troxel, who just threw the masquerade party in Roseburg last night, and um, I want to see how, how how it all went for him and uh, and whatnot. That I had a I have a mask that has a big nose on it, and uh, I think I put my nose in about thirty people's mouths last night. <laughs> um, and just with like I'm sure it, my nose spread a, a couple of diseases because uh, <laughs> on like I would just walk up to somebody and and put it right next to their mouth, and then it, it's just a reaction to blow it apparently. But um, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> I want to start off uh. With uh, I, on an on another somber tone, on this beautiful Oregon day, uh, we lost another another uh, great this week. Uh, Jerome Kersey, former Portland Trailblazer, power forward. Power. Uh, he, he was small. He I, he was a forward. Yeah, uh, he, not typically. A little bit towards you. Just face it toward. Yeah, there you go. Not typically. Sorry. <laughs> He was a small forward, power forward. He was a forward. <laughs> he was very uh, up front and forward. The reason I had it over here is because I was going to be facing this direction. But we got, uh, I mean, got to give it up for for Jerome Curse. Um, did we find out, was it It was a blood clot type thing that, that he died from? Yeah, he got a blood clot tossed from his leg up into his lung. That's so weird how that and stuff works. It helped find out. They helped probably helped Chris Bosch find yeah. out he had some shit going on. So is that something that like he just he looked into it because of that? I you know I don't know. It just seemed you know it, timely. Yeah, timely it happened happened around. Yeah, two days um, afterwards. What uh, what? So like you you've been watching basketball for. When did you think you became like a where you paid attention a lot I to the NBA? I remember really, I guess a, a lot. I paid attention in like 1992, I think. I remember it was the Bulls versus the Blazers was the uh-huh. first real season. Not even the season I paid attention to. It was the playoffs, but around that time, be early the playoffs. 90s. And oh. he, was, he was probably, I would say... N- their Nick Batum, or like, but not the same type of player. He right. was, he just he was good, but he wasn't a star. Yeah, um, and he was. I think he was both of our favorite Blazers for the time, for sure. Um, I, what's uh, what's your? Do you have like a best memory of Jerome Kurt? Really, Jerome. he 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 scored one. It's just a regular game. I don't even remember who they played. Did I call I, him Jerome Curse just a little bit ago? Uh, if you're just because we were talking about uh, Javon Javon Curse yeah, yeah, yeah. earlier, and I, 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 I you might have just shortened up Curse <laughs> if you said it. Uh, That's um, what all the kids are doing these days. Yeah, you know, J, J- Curse <laughs> or Curse. Yeah, that would still. Anyway, sorry, Kurs. I, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> Anyways, <you again. laughs> um, he 
he, his best year he he averaged nineteen and eight, which it's is a solid, a solid, solid year. year. Nineteen eight and and three assists on top of that, one steal. But he um there was a a year or a game he I always wanted to see him dunk. And and just because he, I I knew he was in dunk contests mm-hmm. earlier in his career, he just had a to, he just had a tomahawk dunk, just a regular dunk that would just ah get excited for it. Yeah, I remember he got two fast breaks, and the first one he did the tomahawk, and then the next time down he just did two hands, and <laughs> that's a memory where I was just I remember looking at my mom, and I was just like, he didn't dunk it with he didn't he do didn't it do it again <laughs> like um. Yeah, he, uh, I don't know why, I don't know why it was, was it like a personality thing? Because he was, he was pretty beloved oh, in yeah. Portland, yeah, like yeah, as yeah. far as all the players. They had Clyde, of yeah. course, and Cliff, and that whole, that whole group of guys. Yeah. Ter- Terry Porter. Terry Porter, yeah. Um, Ram Porter. Buck Williams. You would say, though, Terry Porter, Buck Williams, Clyde Drexler, um, another late great. Clifford, uh, um, gosh, dang it! I cannot forget <laughs> his name. The center for those teams. I was uh, just talking about him with my mom, and it's a shame I'm not remembering him. What is, what is his name? The, I mean, uh, Kevin Duckworth. Duckworth. Yeah. That's what it yeah. was. I don't know why I couldn't think of that, but he was he was actually a uh, um, he made the All Star team in the early '90s. I was going back through the centers. I was like, yeah. Dale Davis, no. Uh, uh, Chris Dudley. Uh. Who, is, who is the guy? <laughs> Arv- Arvidas. The, uh, the Vetus. This is not my Vetus. He's not your... Gosh dang it. He's not my Vetus. He's not your Vetus. Yeah, he's our. But um, I, I just... You know, when I was a kid, I wasn't paying attention to basketball as as closely as you were, I'm sure, back then. I didn't know stats. I knew players. Yeah. So that was it. Because I was uh, just a, a Bulls fan just because I love Jordan. You how, know, and, how could you not? Jordan, um, man. But, I, you know, I was also a Blazers fan just because it's our only pro team <laughs> to root for in Oregon. Yeah. And uh, But Kersey, he had a thing about him, and uh, the Shans, the Shans, is that? Is the Shans, it? Mike Shonnelly. Yeah, yeah. Shonnelly. Um, he, he had a, you know, the thing that he would say, my dad would always tell me about like the stuff that he would say when all and and mercy, mercy, Jerome Kersey was, was the, the, my favorite one that he would yeah. do. And so we went to, uh, I remember it was the Sacramento key, the Sacramento Kings. Is that, that's a, yeah. Yeah. And who was the short guy that played for them? The real short guy Spud? that would, uh, Spud Webb. Yeah, I saw yeah. Spud Webb. We went to that game, and uh, we had we made a big ass sign, like it with big letters, "Mercy, Mercy, Mercy, Mercy. Jerome Kersey," yeah. and we got it signed by uh, Sean Lee and Jerome Kersey, and oh, I want to say sick. Cliff Robinson. I honestly, that is I, sick. just now thinking about that. I have no idea where that sign oh, went or if man. my dad still has he it. He has to. I'll have, have to it. ask him. That's sick. But it was it was really cool. Yeah, we we got to go down onto the floor and and get autographs and shit, and it was pretty neat as a nice. as an eight year old or whatever, however old I was, seven maybe. And nice. uh, I remember it being pretty cool. And and this is the first time I'd like I'd seen like adult black people <laughs> in my life. <laughs> I think I think that's for all, all of us. Yeah, I've grown up games. in Roseburg and and, <laughs> and I just and it was they were so huge. You know, you don't you don't get a good sense of of the size of of the somebody when players. it's when they're all 7 feet tall yeah. or, or 6 6 6 and up. Yeah, um Cliff Robinson I remember seeing it, his hands were, were I just him holding a sharpie when he signed the autograph. <laughs> yeah. It was like, are you kidding me? Um, but yeah, that, that's all I remember. And you know, uh, everybody, all of them were super nice guys. You know, I don't think they didn't have any kind of a bad boy kind of reputation nice. or anything. And they were all super. You know, Clyde was. That's just, the Blazers for you. Yeah. Yeah, classy organization. Yeah, they, I mean, they turned into the jail Blazers, but that was yeah, the, for a little Zeebo while. And it was and, been smoking weed. Fuck yeah. them. Fuck that guy. Rod Whatever. Strickland, Cliff Robinson, Isaiah yeah. Ryder. Exactly. David um, Stottlemyre. Fucking weird. They've had some players throughout the years. Need to get back to the, the Who do you think is the most um, infamous 
blazer of all time? Clyde. Cause Clyde the Glide. Did am I mistaken? Rodman Rodman played for I'm just thinking about him because he played for the Bulls for a little while. I guess did he he didn't ever play for the Blazers, did he? No, he had the Lakers, Spurs, Pistons, and So who do you think it who do you think is the most infamous? Oh, the infamous like bad boy. Yeah. Okay, not Clyde. Fuck that. I, I should, immediately I think about that. Uh, Sheed and and Stoudemire comes to mind. The Sheed, the Sheed, just because he broke the record for technical fouls. <laughs> yeah. And, and he still did it. And that was the thing about Rashid, is he would. They used to tee him up for he nothing. He would play better after he got one technical foul yeah. in a game. <laughs> And and his numbers were, I mean, obviously they dropped off after he got two because yeah. you don't play anymore. <laughs> way you, off. You're out. Way off. Um, but his numbers were better when he got a technical foul. Yeah. God, that was a good team, too. It's got to be Sheed then, I think. Stoudemire got in more legal trouble, I think. But yeah, Sheed was beloved. But it, though, uh-huh. inf- Infamous, he, I think, is that's a... Yeah. He could... He, he could... He could come back to Portland any time. Right. Damon Stoudemire, everyone sort of ashamed of him. <laughs> done with him. God. I, w- I never really liked him. I thought he shot too much. I guess uh, old, uh, what's his name that they picked up in front of Michael Jordan and also uh, Greg Oden. Oh, those Sam, those two Sam guys, Bowie. Sam Bowie, and those two guys could be considered, I guess, just as Jesus far as Christ, as dude. far as flops go. Oh, yeah. they They were... You know, they 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 blah blah blah. blah. They <laughs> they they harbored us um, in the losing categories for yeah. a while. Um, um, never horrible. They just didn't do very good. Actually, that's the, that's what it was with Odin. Yeah, uh, Odin just you know the, he wasn't he was hurt all the time. Yeah, uh, yeah, the man of glass, Sam Bowie, and then he rocked his ex girlfriend for. <laughs> And Sebastian Telfair got in, he got in some big trouble too recently, didn't he? Yeah, but he wasn't a blazer Sebastian at the time. Yeah. <laughs> what? Who? Oh, that guy. Oh, that guy that had that TV show on that ESPN guy. too? That guy, yeah. The Deuce? So let's, uh, might as well keep on some blazers talk a little bit. Yeah. Aaron Aflalo joins the team. And some other guy that's so mad right now that he that nobody Something can gee. remember who he is. Something <laughs> gee. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> he averaged like 14 points a game, really? too. Is, is he a starter or is he a six, uh, he's, six seventh guy? He'll be a, like our, our eighth, eighth guy, I think, if he even gets to get in every game, you know. We have, um, God, I can't remember, Darrell Wright, you know, he's on our bench still. And you can, you know, he's a three point threat, but that's about it. He'll take over a game if uh-huh. everyone else is hurt. <laughs> Dude, we got to – I mean, they have a pretty good shot, I think. They have a team together. and well, I'm trying to pop up the um, depth chart to, to, to look at it in comparison to – Is that a y- chart that uh, Johnny looks at every morning to see how many bracelets he should put on? <laughs> depth no, chart. It, it's <laughs> – Oh, it's, it's Tuesday. It's, it's, it's I'm gonna the go. The chart s- I look up it's, how Johnny Depp's doing. I'm so gonna I go with wear. seven bracelets <laughs> and a leather uh, strap around my wrist. What is wrong? Wrong with Johnny Depp? The Depp chart. Like, um, I don't like him, but he is a. He seems to get weirder. I, I love guess the, as they get older. They I get, love the guy, but I mean, can you forgive Tonto? And apparently this new one, <laughs> this new one is is going nowhere. The the funny, the one that's supposed to be funny. He's a detective or something. Yeah, yeah. But uh, um, I don't remember. <laughs> the oh, the Blazers shit. got a shot this year, and that's why a flalo came. I'd like to. I'd, he he's. That's what he says. I love I love the way that the Trailblazers like talk to their fans. I'm sure it's the same. I only see it here, of course. I guess. Sure, it's the same in most cities. I don't but, think New York gets that. But they put out like they put out like you know a whole thing. This is for the fans. This is what I want to tell the fans. Here we go. I mean, is it updated? Yeah, yeah, it is. Aflalo, Alonzo Gee, that's the guy we were. Dude, Myers Leonard could come into his own, you know, in the next couple of years too. With with the big guys down, it looks like that's what we're hoping is going to happen because Chris Kamen. In Myers here, Myers. Well, finish this. Finish the story. Oh, Chris came in who? Oh, uh, <laughs> got her pregnant. Got pregnant. It's a sore subject for me. 
my <laughs> very first girlfriend. Huh? And my very first girlfriend, <laughs> Chris. God, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was my fault. That was an inside joke. Uh, for anybody who knows. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, wait, did a guy named Chris come in your girlfriend? I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Shit. Um, Crazy ass fucking hoag. So I, you know, I hope it happens this year. Like, I want to see him get past the second round at least. I mean, we got to see it last year where they got past the first. Yeah. Damn. Um, Damn time. It was... That and that was such a magical moment too, because we had a, a room full of Blazers fans that haven't got to watch <laughs> that. playoff action like that from them for years and years. They hadn't won a they hadn't won a, a playoff series in I think since nineteen and two thousand maybe really somewhere around was that that it's was with Stoudemire and yep. Sheed and everybody Lakers yeah. And uh, horrible, horrible stuff. So and so, yeah, we have a room full of Blazers fans, and Damian, uh, cat, you know, get, catches that pass out there. He calls for it, catches it, and sinks a three to win the game. Uh, they were in overtime, right? It was overtime, or was it just the uh, end of the game? I think it was to it. W- if yeah, it was in the game. Yeah, he doesn't average thirteen points a game. <laughs> <laughs> stat check, stat yeah. check. Four point five. Alonzo, Alonzo Gee does Gee. not. Right. Um. So, yeah, I mean, I ho- like we have all the pieces there. You've got a Flalo now who he's going to back up Matthews. Yeah, and if, you know, and that's in case, I mean, someone gets hurt, you, you, I mean, you've got him. I mean, he's that's a big, especially with Batum being so iffy this mm-hmm. year. He's not, not really. He's kind of the forgotten man this year, which is really weird. He is, and I looked at his stats, and there, there's a reason for that. Yeah. He's he's gone down. I, he's I didn't realize he had gone down this far. I know he's been hurt and battling injuries, but he's, you know, he, he he's supposed, supposedly all-star talent. You know, yeah. All-star talent. Yeah. And he, and he needs just needs to get some meanness to him. Mm-hmm. And I think if you're the, listening, Nicholas. The Aflalo, <laughs> the Aflalo move also it seems seems like we kind of talked about it a little bit. We're not maybe not having Wesley Matthews back well, next year. It's, it's a possibility it's, with with Lamarcus Aldridge, Wesley Matthews, and Robin Lopez all being up for contract at the end of the year. Right. And also Aaron Aflalo is up, but they have a player option on him, which I think they'll pick up if Wesley happens to go. Which I don't know why there's nothing making me think that they want to leave yeah. but i just know how the business is business and, and well i'm looking at it kind of like Marcus i'm like the money. cowboys this year it's you know they're talking big about wanting to keep all these guys around the marco and it's and it's somebody's going to have to you know here's a, here's a theory for you to branch off of this a little bit stay on sports but um they saying DeMarco's workload last year was given to him because they knew they weren't going to have him this year. You know, so why, why, just why hold the reins on wow. him? Wow, yeah. And just let, I mean, because he, he was first in the league in um, carries. carries and yards, plus he had 40 something receptions, I think. Yeah. Maybe not 40, but he had enough, 28, that's might, a good, maybe. That's a good number. 28 sounds right. Um, and he, there was, other time there was other stuff that he so he wasn't just not involved in the playbook on plays he wasn't getting the ball he was still still out playing hard i feel bad for him actually yeah. because he did sort of give his heart and soul to him this year but they're gonna give him a contract and and you know probably might have taken a year off his current you know <laughs> he did and <laughs> i think well, he did for sure and it's amazing that he did carry that workload i think that was another proving thing where he's been he's yeah, had injury yeah. concerns you know over the years and he you yeah. know he's, he's missed some games and then this year he just you know stayed healthy and carried the load like a motherfucker mm-hmm. um let's uh so i mean obviously Blazers are winning the championship. Who who do you think in the East gives them any kind of trouble? The, uh, Miami just look. lost Chris Bosh for the- Yeah, Miami, let's let's sort of excuse them from the mix here. Yeah. Um they the East is a lot better than they were last year, which 
they were atrocious last year. Yeah, <laughs> they were god awful. I think they ended up having uh, halfway through the season there was two to three teams over five hundred. Um, but Atlanta has a shot because if you think back to the Pistons, the year they won it with all those just role play. I mean, good players. Yeah, the same type of team. She. They've all bought into it. Yeah, she. Good for Sheed. Mm-hmm. Um. Fucker. Toronto Raptors, uh, they have they're like they're more like the Blazers. I feel like where they're. I mean, it's a shooters game. They're gonna shoot. Right. So I mean, they they can make a run for it. But Chicago, I Chicago and Cleveland are both, both. Now Chicago's guy is he staying healthy this year? Rose. Yeah. He's he, yeah, but he's not even the guy. He's you got not- the, they got Billy Butler or Jimmy Butler, not Billy Butler. He's a baseball player. They got Jimmy Butler, and he's a stud. He averages 25, or 20, 20.5 a game as a shooting guard. On top, and with Derrick Rose still staying relatively healthy, you know, and doing... And, the, doing, and they got... Is Taj Gibson still doing doing work? I'm, I'm pretty sure. I, I, I haven't heard much about him, but I, he actually... There's a possibility he might have got hurt. I'm thinking, but they they have Lua. No, they don't have Lua Al anymore. But no. they have wa- dang Joaquin, Joaquin Noah. Uh, they still have K- Joe Kim. Yeah, he's the heart and soul of that team. Oh, you know, like they- without he's the team. And, but they got Pau Gasol, so they got Jimmy Butler, Derrick Rose, Pau Gasol, wa- Joaquin Noah, Taj Gibson, and Mike Dunleavy's starting at small forward, but. He's a three. That that's exactly what you want him to do. He'll, he'll Kirk be, Heinrich, boom, hit a three. Oh, he's still playing for them. Hit a tray. Aaron he's, Brooks, huh? Yeah, he did some crazy stuff the other night though that wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they got a team. They actually are deep. That's um, cool. I'm excited. I'm I'm excited. Blazers Bulls. That'd be a nice one. For them. I'd like it. Let's uh. Everybody would. Let's give old Troxel a call. Alrighty. Talk to him for. Me heard his voice for, for a years. while probably be quiet during this the hell was that it was the TV Domino's. uh yes I'd like a large uh vagina lips pizza oh I want I want I want dick foreskins on mine <clears throat> Troxel welcome to the cave cast how we doing doing good um just me and Marcus in here today cause Kynes uh I think he got into some. He he, he got broke that. his dick trying to make sweet love to a some kind of bovine it's farm animal. Elk disease again, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't I didn't think of a good disease before <laughs> before we did this, so I'm going with that. Um, so overall, uh, well, I guess we'll uh, for people that don't know, you, you've been My doing these parties. Me to tell you Fedor forever. Who did? My brother. Hell yeah! Right on. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> the, the the goat. Um so so you're doing the like tell me uh basically like how'd you what what made you decide to start doing these uh little parties here in the town? Um well I had my parties at my house and growing up over the years they always seemed to be real popular and you wanted to save uh, money on super two glue? Halloween's ago. What's up? I said you wanted to save money on super glue from fixing all the broken shit in your house. Yeah. So you started to do it somewhere else. Yeah, all the mops <laughs> I was having to buy for mopping the floor. <laughs> uh, so two Halloween ago, I had the big shit kicker at the house, and it just got out of hand. We had right around 120 people here, Jesus. and my house just got destroyed. <laughs> and Brandon, he um, had had a Halloween party every year; it was real popular. You know, he had close to 100 people at his house every year and so he decided he wasn't going to do anymore because he just remodeled his house and <laughs> and he, we got together and he was like dude I think we could throw one hell of a party together we just need to find a place to do it and we brainstormed for a while like let's just do a bar huh. let's get a bar you know to ourselves and invite our friends we, uh, we ended up having a lot of friends yeah now uh did you have like an inside track with the bar or did you just kind of go to them and, and they were cool with it? It helps to know people. Yeah. 
Apparently not, because I had to sit out in the cold for fucking 20 minutes last night. <laughs> well, that would just be fair to everybody. <laughs> I know, I expected to walk in there like Henry Hill and get a table next to the fucking, to the band leader and... <laughs> um, so, uh, as far as, like, sponsors and stuff, like, Crown Royal was a sponsor of the party? Is that, am I mistaken? Crown not? Royal and Belvedere Vodka. Now, how do you, how do you, do you, uh, approach them, like, send an email and be like, we're doing this thing, you want to get down on this? Or? I can't let out all my trade secrets. So <laughs> hey, well, we're trying to get sponsorship on the Cavecast, so. <laughs> <laughs> how did you do it? Uh, <laughs> I know a guy yeah. who's a uh, rep for a liquor company. I know a guy that knows a guy. And, you know, just knowing him through the st my dad's store and everything, and okay. I got a hold of him and said, hey, is this something you guys do? And he said, fuck yes, we do. So they just started hooking us up, and he, you know, trains the bar staff on the product, and Brings us tons of stuff to give away. You know, some people like to call swag. <laughs> yeah. The one we're gonna for. That's the only time uh, I use the word swag. What? That's the only time I use the word swag. <laughs> swag. <laughs> it rhymes. So, right. yeah, he gives us tons of stuff to give away, and he prints our flyers and does everything. You know, buys all kinds of stuff. So it doesn't seem like it costs them a whole lot of money. Okay. Okay, doesn't cost you. Uh, them as far as sponsorship they just give you some promotional materials and well the stuff they give us in promotional materials is a lot of money right? oh okay they give you a bunch I mean there was four truckloads of stuff huh damn between all the t-shirts and signs and posters and displays and buckets and yeah there was there's like four truckloads of stuff god damn uh Marcus has a... You know, I didn't have all these posters printed, and some of them are generic where they make, a, you know, 10,000 of them and throw them all over the country, but, you know, a lot of them are made just for this party. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and those are expensive to print, especially, like, the big three-foot-by-three-foot three ones. That's, nice. That's sort of what I was... I was, I was wondering, um... E... e, e was I got a little cray cray. I was I guess I was uh slamming shot glasses on the ground and Oh really? Yeah. That was actually gonna be my next question. Like how did it all was there any kind of drama or anything? Anybody getting any fights? Not one bit. Not one nice. bit. Nice. That's um, that's nice. There was no fights. They had to have um they had one guy that's eighty six out of there get in and they just they found him inside and <laughs> they escorted him out, and then uh, there's two other people. There's only two people that are on our shit list that aren't allowed in. Anthony Weber yeah. and who else? <laughs> 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 and uh, they showed up in a limo, I guess, all decked out in the nice clothes, <laughs> wearing masks, all excited <laughs> to get there, and they, they got wrestling. turned around. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I guess they weren't happy about it, and they were like, where's my phone? You know, the wow. owner. Where's the, where's the owner at? Blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> the bouncers were like, sorry, this isn't her party. She's not the one saying right. you come in or not. Um, I, I won't ask you on air, so, to, so but I do want to know who these people are eventually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. Um, so you got a little... Uh, you got a little drunk ski last night yeah a little bit i'm paying for it today a little tossed up um i thought it was cool that like i, I expected one of you guys to get on a microphone and and kind of get up and hype the crowd up a little bit but it was also kind of cool that neither one of you was walking around like yeah this is my party bitch and uh did it pay off any at all like uh being a major uh party mogul <laughs> <laughs> You're definitely, you're definitely one of the more popular people at the party, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's wanting to introduce you to their friend, and oh, everybody's, Jesus. oh, this is your party, oh my god, thank you so much. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it's a lot of, we meet a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jared, the DJ, he does a good job of 
hides in the crowd. I don't think it might sound like a retard. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I got on there for just two seconds to say thank you. Nice. Thanks for coming. And that spray champagne all over a bunch of bitches. What? And spray champagne all over a bunch of bitches. I went to get champagne to do that, and they wouldn't <laughs> let me. That's awesome. Hey, at least you gave it the effort. So, uh, hey, Troxel. So, so is this something that you're you're gonna keep doing on a regular basis? Um, yeah, we're gonna do three of those a year. Nice. Three of them. Three a year. We're gonna do this one, one in the summer, and then that one. Huh. I was giving Marcus sort shit for season. not going. So I, I said he's never gonna have a chance to go to a masquerade party again, and he he begged to differ. <laughs> he was for sure he could find another one. <laughs> well, I don't know if, uh, if this party next year will be a masquerade or not. It might, I mean, we haven't talked about it. We may keep the same theme. Yeah, just just don't yeah. ever do an '80s themed party because that shit is outplayed. And '80s, ah, '70s, baby. You're all but actually our next party. <laughs> Celebrity theme party would be fun. I like that. Yeah, that's kind of Halloweenish, but I, I mean, I I, Cause I know exactly who I want to dress up as. Oh my God, give me. Now I'm drawing a blank on his name. Is he is he from an Austin Powers movie? No. <laughs> oh my God, the, the the exercise guy with the afro. Oh, uh, uh, the short shorts. Simmons or or Richard Simmons. Richard yeah. Simmons, yeah. Nice. Yeah, Richard Simmons. I think I would make a great Richard Simmons. Tiny little short shorts with nothing out. Nice. So, um, <laughs> we I'll let you go here in a here in a minute, but I before because we're gonna get into our next segment, which is a uh, a new game show that I'm gonna be playing. I wanted to ask you, uh, what do you think about the whole Anderson Silva thing? I wanted I wanted a couple thoughts from from Atroxel on this. Anderson Silva and the steroids. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't read anything in the last couple of weeks. I mean, I was reading on it when, it when it first came out, and then I seen he failed a second one. He failed the fight. The night of the fight, he failed one, too. He failed one 30 days before, and then the night of the fight. It was the, okay, it was the night of the fight. Yep. Um, do you know what, what he failed for, exactly what it was? Um, he One of them was an anti-anxiety medication that's illegal to to do in the UFC, and the other one was... Protostarolone or something. I always forget how to. There's so many of these steroids that sound the same, but it yeah. was a, it was a and anabolic so, steroid. My thing is like there are so many things that are illegal. I mean, these guys can't even drink a Pepsi before a fight because <laughs> yeah. they can't have caffeine in their system. Yeah. I mean, true. granted, they aren't going to be wanting to drink caffeine. They don't <laughs> drink Pepsi before a fight, but right. The the list of drugs that are on the Nevada game to, on the Nevada Athletic Commission or whatever it is sporting it's ridiculous I mean I understand they gotta keep up with all these different kinds of steroids but it's like what Shill Soren was on they're talking about you know the synthetic uh, testosterone for people yeah. with low T I have low T I'm sorry but just getting my testosterone up to where it should be yeah, is not going to give me a huge advantage. <laughs> now, was it like Tiago Alves or somebody who got busted several years ago? When he was doing it, his was four times the normal level. <laughs> uh, like Tiago Tiago Silva. That should be illegal. Yeah. But when somebody just takes something to get up to a normal level, that shouldn't be illegal. And that's just completely. Bullshit, yeah, I think I think as far as that was concerned, they just kind of got sick of of just dealing with it in general because that TRT was a huge thing for a while. And I mean, it's yeah. it's obvious, you know, you can look at the fighters like Dan Henderson, who's who's now off of it. He's been knocked out a couple times, and uh, you know, we've yet to see what Vitor is gonna do besides get his fucking body turned inside out by by Weidman. Uh, <laughs> Chris Weidman's a bad man. Oh yeah, he he's a bad dude. Um, and so I mean, my thoughts is is I don't Anderson Silva has always been one of my favorite fighters of all time. I mean, I've always hated him. I know, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. You know, they were talking about after before Respect. the steroid thing. They're like, oh, one more fight and he could fight Weidman again. I'm like, I don't want to see that at all ever again. Like, I I can't take another one. 
you know. <laughs> Yeah, he is. Whiteman is uh, Anderson Silva's kryptonite, that's for sure. Um, I'm gonna, I respect Anderson Silva as a fighter. He is obviously one of the greatest of all time. I just don't care for his tactics. And, yeah. And how he goes out there and just plays with people. He can whoop his ass with their ass. Well, yeah, and uh, I mean, it's part of his game. Part of his game is trying to get somebody to come forward and get mad. It's kind of, that's why it was interesting watching the Diaz fight because... That's both I really. Love that Diaz did it back to him. There, it's yeah. That he laid down in the cage. <laughs> that, was amazing. that was awesome. But but he kind of he did the same thing to him, and that's both of their game. They want to get somebody coming forward and making mistakes, and and yeah. the you know their hands are so much better than everybody else's that 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 works for them. But then you got somebody like Weidman who's like, oh well, everybody misses that first punch when he pulls his head back. If I just throw another one and keep going forward, then. Night night, sweetheart. Yeah. Weidman has his number. Oh yeah. Weidman I think has everybody's number. He's he's a beast. I think Jacare and uh Romero probably could give him a little bit of trouble, but I don't see anybody taking that belt. You know who I was surprised to see lose was Johnny Hendricks. I, I thought he was gonna hold the title for a while. Yeah, and I I kinda thought that he won that fight. I, I'm a huge Robbie I Lawler thought, fan. I think he but... got screwed. Robbie Lawler did not win, especially uh, when it's always Didn't you finish. have to beat the champ. Didn't yeah. Finish. You have to finish the champ usually to get the belt. And I thought he won the, the you know, I thought he won three out of five. And I mean look at the Gustafson and Gustafson and John Jones fight. Gustafson whooped John Jones. And match. that's and that's John one Jones of the closest ones where got the win. Yeah, I wouldn't have been mad. And it was kind of the same as that fight too, because I wouldn't have been mad if Gustafson won. Well, I wanted Gustafson to win, but I wouldn't have been, you know, I wouldn't have been like, oh, I'd be like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I can see him. And the same thing with with Robbie Lawler going back. It's like, oh, I could see it either way, but I, I still think Hendricks won the fight. Yeah. But. I'm just mad Hendricks didn't finish the fight. I feel like that's why he lost it. I, yeah. was, I keep. And plus, plus Hendricks tends to take his foot off the gas in the last couple of rounds, so I think that really, that with the GSP fight, that really kind of screwed him too. And um, But that's, you know, those... Those champions, that's why they call them the champion rounds, championship rounds. So, yeah, I think Gas about that last round, too. He also, I didn't know, kid just being an excuse, but he also said something about he didn't have a great weight cut and kind yeah, of blame Dolce for that. He never does, yeah, everybody blames Dolce for not having. <laughs> um, so, all right, but uh, yeah, we'll let you go. Thanks for uh, talking to us on here, and we'll, we'll have you on, uh, what is it, next week or the week after that we were planning on? Yeah, I'll like come on next week. Okay, yeah, well, um, we will see you then, and uh, yeah, I'll shoot you. I'll shoot you a text here, middle of the week, let you know what we're gonna try to talk about and stuff. So, cool. All right, man. Well, uh, I'm glad your party went good, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right, thank you. Yeah, later, man. Cool, cool, cool. Right on. So yeah, I asked. I asked him last night after I gave him a rash and a shit about having to wait in line, because <laughs> uh, I was like. You know, I was like, what's the point of running these things if you're not going to be able to hook your homies up? And and I understand he's in it with somebody else. And Oh, shit. Damn it. Um, damn it. <laughs> we'll get into that in a second. Sorry. Um, I got to stop reacting to those because nobody else can hear it except for us. <laughs> <laughs> it just you got to announce it, though, if you do react because then it's like, oh, I guess it's time. <laughs> yeah. So, um. Anyways, sticking on to that same subject of steroids and the UFC now making a more uh, stringent policy for their testing and everything. Um, we have a new game to play. And because I, I can see a lot of more people getting popped. It's, and it's if they're going to start. Game yeah. the hey. Juicer! <laughs> Oh, welcome, folks. Welcome to the new game show that is sweeping the land, Name That Juicer, where we try to guess which UFC fighter will be popped next. Let me bang again, bro. I love you, bang. Let me bang, bro. Um, so, so, yeah, this is a new game we got that uh, 
We are going. Can you go ahead and bring up um, the UFC.com schedule? Here's the deal: is we figured that it's inevitable that there's going to be some main card guys caught real soon for happen. for more steroids because they're going to be doing more out of competition testing, randoms, and 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 popping up on somebody's back door, going, "Hey, piss in this." Or let no, me you stick. Can't go anywhere. <laughs> Hell, you do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Vandalay <laughs> slipped out the back door. I don't. I don't speak English. I don't speak. And bing. <laughs> fucking <laughs> gone. He gone. Fucking make that that uh, testing machine smoke probably. Jesus. <laughs> Breaks it. Juiced up Vandy. I'll take juiced Is up this Vandy. It? Or. or my... Think? Should have a schedule on UFC.com. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So I wanted to look at, and we could start right here. <laughs> start. Bam. Uh, yeah. The fight. The fights tonight is uh, Bigfoot Silva versus Frank Mir, and I could see both of those guys. Here's the deal: is the same thing with Silva, and and I seen it with uh, Stefan Bonner and everybody. They come into the end of their career, and it seems like they go, "I'm not gonna fight anymore, anyways. This is gonna be my last one, probably." So. I don't give a fuck if I get popped, you know, I'm doing, I'm juicing up. I want, you know, yeah. and everybody wants to go out of their career with a bang, you know, Oh, it's already on. of a needle full of steroids, <laughs> the bang, yeah, the, bang. Um, <laughs> the bang of the bang. So we got, and I know that they're, they decided against doing random testing on UFC 187 guys. They're going to start it afterwards. So I think we, I think we just go to, uh, here we go. Um, Let's see here. Okay. So this is how it rolls. Let's start with uh, UFC 185. Okay. Fight card. Pettis dos años. Fight. Where is it? Where is it? It's right. I think that worked. Okay, that... so who do we have in the main card? We've got Anthony Pettis versus uh, Rafael dos años. Carla Esparza versus uh, Johnny Hendricks and Matt Brown. Oh, that's a good fight. Huh. And yeah, yeah. Roy Nelson and Alistair Overeem. Overeem could be one. Yeah, you want to take a pick there? <laughs> uh, okay. And blah, 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 blah. All right, let's go to the next one. Let's okay. keep that in mind. We got Overeem on that one, I think. Yep. Is that a unanimous? Yep. Okay. I mean... This That's I think I think. <laughs> I think what we do here is we pick who's likely and then we pick out of we out of our list of who's likely who our, we think is our our go to. Yeah. So let's go to the next Fox it's uh Rio de Janeiro. Yeah, um, Damian Maya. Ooh, it's in Rio too, Maya. so I don't oh, know. This oh they do You gotta factor testing. in they're doing their own testing, so <laughs> Yeah, we no one's getting in trouble here. Jesus. This isn't even a very good card. Not saying it's just not no, great no for me. Pop out names. That's, yeah, Suiz, uh, Su Su I mean, he's fighting in the prelim. Suiza. Su 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 oh, that's a different Suiza. Uh -oh. All right, let's get out of this one. All let's right. go. Let's uh, let's stick with the pay per views. Maybe okay. I want to narrow it down. Well, some of some of those. Yeah, you're right. I say some of those fight nights like Min about Mendez versus Lamas. Yeah, let's try that one. That one. If not, this one has nothing. We'll just go to the pay per views from here. It's on. it's usually it, I always get Gory surprised is. when a small guy gets yeah. Guida, God, Guida is a freak. <laughs> I play Guida, the caveman. God. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do when we were talking with Troxel. I wanted to ask him about this Walmart video that he put up. Have you seen it? Uh. -uh. He got a People of Walmart video on his phone here in town the other day. And it's this bald-headed bitch with just socks on, and then she's got a hoodie underneath a t-shirt, a hoodie sweatshirt underneath the t-shirt with the hood oh, shit. underneath like a hunchback. It's not even <laughs> the hood. I mean, you pull, pull the hood out like you're in the 90s and you're a decent human being for fuck's sakes. Jesus but no, Christ. You no, know, she was in a hurry to get to Walmart and pick up a fashion magazine or something. I don't know, but she's just a tweaker, and and oh, it was shit. a pretty funny video. But uh. Oh, man. Crow Cop's back. Gonzaga. Dillashaw versus Burrell. Okay, let's check that one. That one. Um, yeah, they already got the shit set, too. Oh! There it is. Yeah! 
I love it. So, um, we got Rampage Jackson versus Fabio Maldonado, who is basically the human punching bag. This is a perfect fight for Rampage. I'm so happy right now. We got Bisbing Dalloway. I think they're both clean. Yeah, uh, Bisbing would it'd be... Evil yeah. Bean. Uh, any up-and-comers coming. You know? I could see Burrell and, and uh, Quentin Jackson on that one. I, I would say Quentin. I would say Quentin, too, just because looking at him, he looks like... But I could say Maldonado also, just because, you know, he might know he's coming into a fight where he's going to get, you know... Where he needs, he needs, he needs to have a little, a little extra. extra. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, Brow, because he's injured. He's coming off injury. He's he's coming that's off what I of, say. of bowing out of a fight because of weight cutting. So Oh, that's what it was? Okay. He, yeah, he passed out. And, okay. Uh, and the Not thing injured. is, is diuretics and stuff. I, I mean, we're all grouping. We're, it, I mean, don't nitpick this game, people. <laughs> we're just starting out. But I mean, diuretics. It's it's just whoever's pissing hot. It doesn't have to be the juice, you know. Yeah, it's it um, could be. Hey, I smoked a, so a, we got, a joint. Before we got the rampage, fight. and I'm gonna say Barrow is a possible dark horse on that one. Rampage Jackson. Rampage. Let's hope not. <laughs> I'm. Okay, UFC 187 on Undercover Cop. Where is it? Jones it is. versus Rumble Johnson. I just I don't even want to throw Rumble out there just because. It would make me sad. It, it would, would make really me make so me sad. sad. So we got Weidman Belfour. I mean, Bel- God, Belfour. Damn, that's a stacked card. Uh, oh shit! On that's there. what I was saying when I saw when I saw I, I knew Brown's fighting Orlovsky. Um, who who's who's cunts? Cunts? Yeah, who's he? Uh, there's lots of cunts. Oh, um, <laughs> cunts. His name is cunts. Zach Makovsky <laughs> versus cunts. Um, you so just be just sitting there punching cunts. Oh man, you know I don't. Uh, Anthony Johnson has the look of somebody that does it, but, but he's big anyway. He's just like, a big gorilla. Yeah. But I, I mean, I'm putting Vitor down there. I think that's a pretty. In his body type, I look at Rumble right in this picture. And he's he, chiseled he, out of stone. He's chiseled, and it doesn't look like he's. It looks like he worked for that shit. Yeah. His his chest or stomach. It's not a six pack. That's just. Uh, it's, it's not. It's not beautiful. It, it, it's just rocks. I just now realized that John Jones has the same kind of nipples as I do. His same puffy nipples. No, you don't have John Jones nipples. No, Sorry, I, bro. Sorry. Um, John Jones. All right, let's go to Nipple let's go to 188, and that'll be our last one because I don't think they probably they, have many schedules. Yeah, we're out. looking at the. They don't even have an undercard on that one yet. Oh, they don't. Yeah, that's just all the fights they sort of have. Oh, okay. If they're even going to have 88, which they don't have anybody. Nah, they don't even have anybody on it. So, so basically, we got <laughs> got a Cormier versus Bader fight. Oh, let's check that out. That's, That's a U- good fight UFC. for Cormier to come back to. Also, yeah, knock out the number five guy. God, I don't like Bader. Look at his offset ab muscles. That's what I was. That's They're what staggered. I was saying about um Rumble. Like it just looks like rocks. Um. So, anyways, that's. I mean, he didn't. Work. We got Vitor Alistair, Overeem, yeah. Rampage Jackson, and possible Henan Barrow. Without looking too far into it. Yeah, and that's. I mean, that could be something. Who do, mean, we'll have to see who gets popped in the next couple months. Yeah, who do you like on? Who do you like out of that list for the front runner? Because I'm thinking, Overeem. Overeem. Oh, I think over. I think Overeem. I mean, Rampage. I just don't. I don't see him coming back and in, in, yeah. in, in risking it right now. Like you know, you know, he he's still relatively. Young, <laughs> I guess. What yeah. is he? Thirty six. Um, thirty eight. He's about thirty six. I'd say it's a pretty good guess. Yeah. Um. I don't know. He just. He. I don't think he'd risk it. And Brow. I think that's really a dark horse pick. Yeah. I don't think that'll be something that'll ever matriculate into anything. Right. But it, for people that just pop out, yeah. Vitor and Alistair are the ones that really. 
I'm gonna go with which over. Is funny, I, I get those got... two mixed up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got a unanimous, uh, unanimous cave cast pick of Alistair Overeem is the next, the next juicer. Here, here we go. Oh, that's a good fight. Romero, I think Romero. Dude, could be... there's a there's that was that was the dark horse that was in the back of my yeah, mind. I as couldn't well. think of his name. Yeah. Um, Not. This is a good card, and that's this a, is good a good card. This is a good juicer card too, because <laughs> I think Ovin Saint Prue, he might he's he's also a uh, an interesting specimen he's of a human weird. being that looks. He's an odd fighter. To yeah, me. he is. Odd. Even his name's odd. Everything of just sort of odd. That Romero fight. That's I forgot about that fight. Those two guys are. That's a middleweight Some tournament right bad, there. Bad man. Leona Machida versus Luke Rockhold and uh, uh, Romero versus Jacare Souza. And those two will fight each other. Whoever wins those fights will probably fight each other. And, well, sometimes they do. Like Machida's been in a one night thing that before. Is like a tournament, man. Yeah, Machida versus six, three versus five. Machida's been in one before with I think he was fighting somebody and then. Uh, Shogun was fighting somebody, and Dana basically said whoever has the most convincing win will get the title shot. So, okay. you is, know, they, is this a middleweight too? No, they're they're light heavyweight. Okay, Saint Prue's working his way up. Patrick Cummins' his n- nickname is Durkin. The the Durkin. 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 He's he lost. He got beat up by Daniel Cormier pretty bad. He's the one that was saying he made Daniel Cormier cry and and. Olympic wrestling practice, um, and it was right after Daniel Cormier's daughter died. So he's cr- probably crying about his not. With, well, he's training for the Olympics yeah. too, so he's super stressed. Plus, plus that died. little thing of having your child die. I made him cry. I made him cry in wrestling practice. Yeah. What are you missing your daughter? What a piece of shit. <laughs> Fucking dickhead. Yeah. Um. The Irish Dragon. Who's Paul that? Felder. Paul he might Felder. be a, a guy you could get behind. Huh. Uh, one of these guys they just signed is the last person to ever beat Conor McGregor. Huh. I don't know if that's him or not, but... Um, let's see. Yeah. I forget. Anyways, uh, um, let's... Uh, break it up. Let's take a little break and then nah, we'll nah, come nah, back. Nah. Well, <laughs> break it down! <laughs> He's 10-0. and 0. Uh, I don't. I don't think that's yeah, him. He's ten and zero, age thirty. <clears throat> um. Well, when we come back, we got a very special guest, and we will talk a little uh, Afro man. And uh, I heard something <sighs> about Joe Flacco. I wanted to bounce off you too. So let's uh, let's do that, and then we'll be right back with our special guest. And now a word from our sponsors. <laughs> This week's CMP Cavecast is brought to you by BadMotherfucker.com. Log into BadMotherfucker.com to order your Bad Motherfucker starter kit and begin your journey to Bad Motherfuckerdom today. Enter the code WAFFLES to get 20% off from your friends at the CMP Cavecast so we can help you be a better you. Bad taste in music? Try being a bad motherfucker. Trouble at school or work? Be a bad motherfucker. Stop being a douche and start being a bad motherfucker today. Bad Motherfucker Starter Kit includes the entire catalog of Tom Waits albums and a pair of headphones. That's waffles at badmotherfucker.com. Being a bad motherfucker is not for everybody, and this starter kit should be used with caution. We are not responsible for any injuries that occur from failing to be a bad motherfucker. If it turns out that you are a weak motherfucker I or a lame motherfucker, that. we cannot do anything about it. Thank I you. I can't hear that. Oh, what? what? <laughs> it said a bad Shut word me. in this. Oh. Well, folks, <laughs> um, if you don't recognize that voice, that is the voice of the CMP Cavecast intro, Mr. Darian. Welcome to the Cavecast. Welcome to the Cubecast, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Right on. So, um, how old are you, Darian? Five. And uh, we'd like, me and Marcus, we'd like to welcome you for your first appearance on the Cavecast. Okay. Good to have you here, man. Okay. So, um, what did you want to talk about? Did you want to do a little freestyle for us or something? Yeah. You want me to kick a beat for you? Oh, yeah. Okay. 
Wait, not yet. What? I'll, what? I'll, I'll, I'm gonna think of it first. That's a freestyle. Just come off the top. Okay. Ready? Run, two, three, go! I love you. I love, I love wrestling. I love wrestling. I like doing beats. I like doing beats. What? Oh. What is that? Did you just diss me? We got. Oh. We gonna have a battle going on here or something? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, it, I think it should. It would probably go kind of like our dance battle went when I whooped your butt. Remember, when, remember our dance battle? Yeah, and you would. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody beat. I guess we gotta have rematches, cause. Nah, you he, he, dan- he danced like a fool. <laughs> he was a dancing fool. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So, a um, good thing. you are in kindergarten, correct? Yes. How do you like kindergarten? Uh, because it lets us play. That's all, What about because you're learning and creating new wrinkles in your brain? Yes, and we get to have free time and stuff. <laughs> um, yeah? You're learning how to read? No. Actually, yes. <laughs> 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 Last I checked, no. Nice. But yeah. Um, where did my phone go? So, um, what else do you like to do? At school? Uh, when, whenever. What, what's your favorite thing to do? Uh, I like to go to my grandpa's le- and sometimes I want to go to Forks Park. Forks Park? Oh, that's a cool place. It's a pretty fun place. Are you excited for the summer to be here so we can go swimming and stuff? Actually, first I want to go to Ferks Park and then go swimming. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good thing. I want to go. Sw- I wish we had a pool so we so I could swim in it. <laughs> um. Well, pools are kind of expensive, so. So maybe we, we'll have to go to the river. We could probably sell one of your feet and get a pool. No. You don't want to. What about just like three toes? No. No. I got an idea. What? I could sell my Batman watch. I'd probably get a pretty penny for that. I don't know if we could buy a pool with it, though. I got a good idea. I could sell my TV. <laughs> this TV? Mm-hmm. I don't mean that TV. <laughs> oh. I mean the other TV, the oh. big TV. <laughs> the front room. You want to sell the big TV in the, in the living yeah. room? Yeah. So you'd rather have a pool than a TV? Yeah. Can't watch cartoons in a pool. If I could what? make a straight-up trade across that. for a pool as for the TV. I, I can watch yeah. any kid movie. <laughs> Why can't you not let me watch that Batman movie? What are you talking about? The Batman movie, remember what I got in trouble with? Um, no. In the basement? We don't have a basement. Yeah, we do. <laughs> I mean, the, the garage. garage. Oh. Where all the other movies were Batman. Oh, because you went out there like a little... Little sneak, and you yeah, got your movie. <laughs> um, start that over. <laughs> what do you mean? You want me to play it, run it back? <laughs> run yeah. that you want to strike that from the record? Okay, that was not true. Do <laughs> not um hear that. Okay, <laughs> pretend that wasn't true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was that? I don't know. I, mean, I can't. Um, what I pretend what remember. wasn't true that you stole a Batman movie oh. out of the garage? Don't. Say that. You know, you, you know, your mom listens to this, and she's gonna know when Ooh. she hears. Sure, he knows. <laughs> okay. Well, um, do you have anything else that you'd like to say to the Cave Cast fans? Yes, I would like to sing. You would like to sing? Yes. Okay, go ahead and sing us a song. But Marcus has to do the beat. Okay. Okay. My name is Darian. I am awesome Danny is His nose is A butt His eyes is his nose He's a booger What? Oh that's messed Marcus up dude Marcus is my favorite friend What? Ow. Because he lets me watch what? The play his game Let's watch him play his game. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Darian. That was a really good job. That was a really good job. Right on. Um, we would like to thank you for coming in. Okay. And um, we can't wait to have you back again. Okay. Um, I got one more thing to say. Okay. One more thing. Oh. Uh, I like to say Darian is a boogerhead. Ah. Oh. 
Oh, geez. I'm just getting <laughs> slammed today. Okay, buddy. Well, thanks for coming in, and we'll see you here in a little while okay, when we get thank, done. Okay, thanks for um, letting me um, join with you guys. You're welcome, buddy. Not anytime. a problem. It was fun, man. I mean, not anytime, but sometimes. <laughs> thanks, buddy. Okay. We'll see you here in a little bit. When I say, it's time to go home, that means go to your room, get all this stuff out. Okay. Right you got on. it, buddy. Okay. okay, you got it, buddy. Thank you. And five minutes. <laughs> five minutes. Okay. And now I'm going to be watching you. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. You got my right. back, right? Right on. Nice having you, Darian. Thanks, dude. <clears throat> <I'm gonna watch> <laughs> what an appearance. What an appearance. Right on. For his debut. <clears throat> so uh yeah that was Darian rocked it that was our uh our wee little roommate that doesn't seem to <laughs> he really loves the the microphone <clears throat> yes <laughs> moving on <laughs> um so yeah there's uh there's Darian folks he's the most adorable kid in the entire world D-Town in the house. So, Afro Man. On a more somber note. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, can, can you bring that video up? Or you yes, want me I to? can. Um, Afro Man, who... Uh, <laughs> Just first thing that pops up after Afro Man is Af Afro Man punch. Punches some punch. bitch. <laughs> so, Afro Man, let's see what we, what oh, we gotcha. got here. I'm getting it. There we go. Uh, Afro Man was on stage recently... And a you girl, you what, that a, was an aphrodisiac a, for me. <laughs> God, that was. <laughs> um, Anyways, a girl, a girl stumbled on stage drunk, and oh, what, what is this? What? What's going on here? What? This is playing on Crowcast. Oh. Yeah. This is some... crazy stuff on the streets. Okay. What are you watching? I don't know. It's not going away. Are you kidding me? <laughs> There's nothing on my computer anymore. Are you watching this? <laughs> no way. Capecast is being taken over. We got <laughs> two, two very muscular dudes. Can you hear us? <laughs> There's no reason this should be happening right now, actually. Um, <laughs> unless someone is hacking in on our oh here I just I just took it over thank you okay we got Afro Man he's got a guitar playing a little solo girl with her drink rolling up behind him just dancing you just know just dancing oh she's giving a little uh -oh. booty bump little booty oh and pause for his defense it was open handed it, right? Was it? It looked no, like a fist. I, I mean, There's no defense for that. I was gonna defend him because it it did look like he was beginning a pretty sweet guitar solo, and I know what it's like to be interrupted in the middle of a guitar solo. It's pretty anger inducing. Yeah. But she she was just <laughs> dancing. Yeah, just so don't she kind of she dude. rubbed her she rubbed up on him a little bit. I mean, I'm not saying this is by any means acceptable. And he goes right back into the solo. And she picks herself up. Now, this one is interesting right here. So, what you've got yeah, right now is he goes back into the solo as the girl's trying to pick herself up off the stage. And a guy... Which I'm imagining... Possibly boyfriend? Could be someone she knows. A guy jumps up on stage. Now, what I was expecting to happen next was this, this uh, strapping lad to, to defend her armor do. <laughs> and go white knight after a grown man just knocked out a girl on stage. No. Gets up. Hey, it's cool, dude. It's and he cool. waves at him and goes to get his girlfriend. I might be grabbing that fucking but guitar I, and slamming it over his face. Here's what I, here's what I saw. 
This right here, because Afro Man just starts to to He's take the mad. he starts to take the uh, guitar off. You want some too? And he <laughs> he goes. Yeah, he, wow. he he starts to take the guitar off like he's like, I'll fight yeah. you too, dude. And uh, do you think that was open-handed? E- either way, I feel like it would have done the same type of thing. Whip, I mean, because it looked like he got it with the open hand and continued to force through it and and through it, you know, flicker. Yeah. Because uh, it was such a, I mean, there was some force behind that. Anyone who hasn't seen it. Um... But, Look at those two dudes. Uh, it really, yeah, that was really odd. Yeah, but they were getting ready to start playing the video. They were. Yeah, uh, it wasn't. So, yeah. so then what we have is uh, this other thing. Let's see here. Why? Why? <laughs> here you go. <laughs> um, this I I think this was as far as time. Now Afro Man's rapping on stage. This is the next night. This dude gets up on stage. I don't know if it was the next night. All right, gives gives him skins. The guy's got a blunt in his hand, and he grabs him and tosses him on. I I, I get that one. I mean, I do get that. I mean, the guy gave him skins. He's like, what else do you want me to do? It goes right back into it. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you this much, Afro Man. You are a consummate performer, sir, because... <laughs> he does not break. I've seen him fuck up two people and go right back into the song without a skipping a beat. Uh, huge, so what's, man. what's Afro Man's deal? <laughs> like he's, he has some anger why problems. Why is he fucking people up? And you wouldn't think that listening to his music. I would think he's a peaceful fucking, you know, just kind of a Palm easygoing. Dale. Yeah. Come back to me. Palmdale. I need you when I love you, baby. <laughs> hey, bitch. <laughs> Punch you in the face. Punch you in the face. What up, Baka? Baka? <laughs> <laughs> um. But I don't, what's I mean? What's half from man's deal? I don't I don't I haven't read anything into this or enough weed, any I kind of ex- explanation. It looked like the dude wasn't passing the blunt to him because the guy was on stage. He was smoking, and the guy on stage, the guy the that just got thrown yeah. off. Yeah, he was smoking a blunt, and uh, I don't know if he was gonna hand trying to hand it to him or what. But that dude, I don't, I don't you know, I. The chick one, he it was not even in the vision he of it. He went zero he to just, sixty. He was just. mad. I mean, he was that mad. I mean, he didn't care who that was. I mean, he was gonna hit her like that. It's like I think, I mean, who know? I don't know if he saw her or what, but he's like, "What's this? What's this chick doing?" And then the the other dude, you know, I, I'm, you know, I don't know. I don't know if anger would be the first thing I resorted to right there. Maybe after the second skins, okay, it's like, Duke, you know, like, come on. Yeah, dude, get the, yeah. Get off. But, get the, but yeah, you don't need bodyguards. You don't need uh, bouncers. He's up there on, on, I like how he's up there on stage by himself. He does, and he doesn't have any a crew yeah. of people bouncing around behind him. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Um. But I, I just don't understand. <laughs> no. Uh, I don't understand why you would go that extreme. And and he doesn't have angry songs, so that so it's so surreal to watch him just go into that violence and then go back into I was gonna pay my car note, but then I got high. <laughs> right. Um Well Akon Akon has the all time greatest of tossing fans off stage. You remember that one? Akon? Oh yeah, let's Toss watch uh Yeah, if you wanna right. bring one of those up, he body slammed a dude. Dude, he says I mean they he it was some. Um, so, tell me if you've heard about this while you're bringing that. Or are you? Are you eh, I'm trying to bring it up. Tell me I'm trying. if you've heard about this. Have you heard of about Joe Cool or AKA Waka Flacco? 
Oh, Waka Waka Flacco. Waka Flacco. Waka Flacco. Joe Cool and Waka Flacco. Joe Flacco and his Baltimore Ra- Ravens, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, I can't get mine to work. It won't work. I can't even get it. So. Technical difficulties. So, so is Joe Flacco putting out a <laughs> putting out a, a rap album? No. I hope Look not. at this. Oh my god! <laughs> so okay, I, I you thought I was bullshitting, didn't you? Waka Flacco. <laughs> and, Are you shitting me? And MC O'Hare, oh which is Michael O'Hare, god. Blindside Ballin. Uh, I want to hear uh, so badly. I want to hear Joe Flacco rapping. Flacco, I don't know, but I don't understand uh, what Rat Face McGillicuddy would sound like. Joe Flacco. Oh my God! I think it, I just found something. Is it true? Is it happening? <laughs> I don't know. No way. No! Can you put this up here? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Joe Flacco, ladies. Wacko, Wacko Flacco Joe. Version of Wacko Flacco Flame song, Hard in the Paint. Hope you enjoy it. I w- it's Joe Flacco. Yeah. I can't get it. But you, um, you gotta get it on yours. Is it YouTube? It's YouTube and it is... Did you put Wacko him? Flacco Joe. Shut your mouth. Joe Flacco, Wacko Flacco Joe. Uh, yeah, I got nothing. Oh, it's, it's, uh, fuck. Okay. Okay, it says mine's casting, but... Cast YouTube? Okay. There we go. <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go. Play. No way. What you think, boy? She sound like one of my intros. <laughs> Took 20 minutes to get into a fucking song. Oh my god. <laughs> what? I don't know. No, it's not can't. him. Did we get trolled? Just did yeah, we get we got trolled. Do we get uh, Flacco rolled? If he, oh yeah. Damn it! I wanted that to be. As soon as he said something about killing Heinz Ward, <laughs> I was like, eh. This is old. God, I can't get this to stop, man. <laughs> I, okay. He might have heard this and did that picture. Okay, now we got Joe's highlight reel coming on. Yeah, I did it just to... University of Delaware. Okay, there we go. I'm not, um, I'm not casting. So... Uh, so did we, we a got, great five-minute waste hey, of time. But yeah, hey. that was still fun. Um, but it could it could still happen, you know? We could still get a Joe Boy. Flack. It, it, we, I mean, oh. I mean, the cave cast does wield a mighty sword. We did get uh, Dame got Lillard into the All Star game, All Star game, game, and uh, you know, so maybe maybe Flacco will hear this and decide he really does need to put a rap album out where he talks about killing Heinz Ward. <laughs> um, God damn, where he, he called God, in, and it's, it's, so it's him. Funny. It's all him. <laughs> he's, like, what? he's like, that was me, guys. He's like, dude, recognize the skills, punk. 
Um, but you know that, uh, I wish it was true, but maybe not. So, um, I want to talk about this house possibly being haunted. Yeah, I'm down. I'm ready um, for this. Oh yeah. I know you've, you've had some weird stuff happen with your lights flickering and I was yelling at my lights and they were turning (laughs) off and on as I was yelling at them. I don't know why I was yelling at the lights, but one, one of you, either the house is haunted or you were haunted. <laughs> no, you were gone. You were gone the other night. So what happened yeah. was, um, me and my lady, we were um, in the middle of some carnal activities in, in the nighttime, and the dog started barking. So we stopped, and I look, and I can see a little bit, little crack underneath the door. I can see that I think maybe she left the bathroom light on when she came to bed or whatever. And uh and I'm looking and I'm I'm hearing like s- some footsteps or something. And I'm thinking Darian's getting or either Marcus just got home <laughs> or Darian's getting out of bed to go use the bathroom. And I'm watching, but I'm naked so I don't want to get up and check right off the bat, you know, because I don't know what, I'm not sure what to do at this point. If it was just me, it'd be fine, yeah. you know, but you don't want to go out yeah. there. The you boner. Know, daring, you know? like, um, you've done it before. I mean. so, <laughs> so, so I'm watching un- the light underneath the door and I see little footprints like go across the door like a horror movie. And, you know, the shadow of the footprints uh, like underneath the crack in the door, just like a horror movie. And I'm like sitting there, like kind of getting freaked out, and and Jessica's like, "What? You know, like you're freaking me out right now. What? Do you, what's going on?" And I'm like, "I just saw, you know, I just saw some. I think Marcus is home, maybe." But then I was like, "Those feet look too small. Like his feet would not have made those kind of shadows." And so we both get up, and you're not here, and um, she goes and checks on Darian in his room, and Darian is passed out covered in sweat like he's just been sleeping in there you know the whole time and hasn't moved hasn't moved and and so i was like okay it had to be the cat you know that maybe she was you know doing something it had to be the cat and so i go out in the living room and the cat is passed out on the couch exactly where we left her 45 minutes before when we when we went to bed so and then that's when i checked your room because because now i'm freaked out and there's still I'm, a chance I could be home. I'm searching the house because, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Because I'm feeling like we had, like, an intruder or something. And I'm searching the house. And uh, so and so we're kind of freaked out. Both of our hearts are a little bit racing or whatever. And so we go to the garage to have a cigarette and, calm, you know, calm down a little bit. While we're in the, we're in the garage and I hear what sounds like a chair being pushed across the floor or something. And so I race back in the house and the dog's in the middle of the living room floor. Like, and she would have barked at something inside and I go back out and I'm like, I didn't see anything. And she's like, I thought it sounded like it was on the deck. And I'm like, stupid. Like, Oh yeah, that's exactly what it sounded like. So either, I think maybe, I don't know if we had a break in or, or what, and they escaped out the back door, but I grabbed a flashlight and went out back and Turn the lights on, you know, and I had to look around. I didn't see anything, but, um, and plus we were keyed up because we were kind of freaked out, you know, so maybe our minds were playing tricks on us, like the ghetto boys. Tricks on me. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but I don't know. And then you've had, you've had some odd things, right? Yeah. No, I've had, I've had plenty of oddness in this house, whereas I, I feel like I get pushed into walls as I walk by them. Like, not pushed. There's just... I, I'm i constantly running into things here. And it's not a normal thing for me. It's like it's like he's a trickster ghost. But again, you walk by and he just... just shoves like, you into the corner. You, you know, like just... So bully. But you know how a ghost would have to do it. It'd have to get its momentum going and, and jump inside your body and push you just enough to... Well, not if they... Not, right if he, not if he met the guy on the train that taught him how to move yeah. stuff physically. Yeah. Like, was it a bottle cap? Yeah. yeah I think it were bottle caps. <laughs> if you met that guy, then, then it's a good possibility he's shoving us into ghosts. the wall. Come home and you're just, sho- you're just shoved into a cupboard somewhere, like like with your this, lunch money gone. <laughs> <laughs> fucking ghosts. No, yeah, it's kind of weird. I remember I texted you the one time. When yeah. Because I, 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 it was it was, it was was so weird. But I, figure, I figured, I I logically, 
logically concluded what happened, but my light went out. I was in my room. I turned. I'm walking. I'm on the computer. I get on the computer. And my light goes out, and I, you know, I look at it. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure. And I just ye- I yell at it. It was irritating. I yell, and the thing pop right back on. You know, it yelled. <laughs> but every time I stopped yelling, it would go back off. So I would keep a yell up, and I gave out this ferocious just. I yell Put and, some it, energy and it, into it stayed on. It stayed on for about five minutes, then went off again. And I, I was just in complete. Feel like nut, a modern day like, Ben Franklin. Like, I would. I felt like I was just giving energy out, you know. <laughs> and I started realizing, you know, our voices, you know, vibrate things, and there's wires, and I imagine the wires vibrated for me yelling, and it just was fucking with the, <laughs> the way it was going. But no, I. I have a super f- super odd, and I thought I saw an old lady in the um, garage. Ah, oh, that's when so weird. I was shroom caking. Old pe- <laughs> old people and children are the creepiest things to see when you don't expect yes. to see a person, especially when they're standing by a weight bench. <laughs> was she doing reps? <laughs> no, she was. She was standing there. Well. I didn't see her feet, if they were off the ground or not. She's like, oh, just don't worry about me. I'm just trying to get my max up. She's, she's going, you want, you want to, you need a spotter? Yeah, I'll spot you. Yeah, I do. Uh, joke's on you. <laughs> um, it's, it's, that's even more disconcerting because now we have yoked up ghosts. <laughs> Maybe they're just using our garage. Name it's the open. juicer. Mm-hmm. That's a ghost. Let's see in our house. Um. Yeah. So, did uh, did we have anything else that, that we haven't really covered yet? I, oh, well, I mean, nine officers charged with sexual molestation of minors, but that's. I mean, Jesus. I just popped up. Par for the course. What is going on here? How can you expect to be trusted when this is what we see from you? Nine cops in eight days charged with sex crimes against minors. Um. The I mean, ones. The ones that bugged me. I mean, not. I'm not saying that. Sex crimes against minors don't bug me, but we were we were reading about them today, and it was the stories of these no knock raids where oh god SWAT teams just get some crackhead says uh, that's that's where they're selling drugs out of, and then you have the SWAT team breaking down somebody's door, and uh, they don't have to even go through the you know once like you were saying. Once someone tells them that that's that's there, what they're doing, yeah, they don't have they could go boom right there. And and if if the word of some you know unreliable informant, some fucking rat, rat drug dealer trying to get can, out of his yeah, own fucking charge, some fucking rat can can get you a uh, what are they called? <laughs> what do you need to search people's a warrant? A warrant. If that can get you a warrant. Then, um, you know, we're fucked in this country. That's all there is yeah. to it. But they've had um, these police officers that have been... They, the latest one was this weekend. But they people do these no-knock raids and people not knowing that it's necessarily the cops open fire on these intruders, these people that are breaking into their... These armed people they, that are breaking think, into their house. Yeah. And we read one story about uh, a guy that killed a cop that they were doing that to where they, they had a tip and they, they raided his house. Well, they tried to, apparently, you yeah. know, and he defended himself and his pregnant, uh, wife and shot a cop. And then they, of course they found no drugs in the house and, you know, it was a pointless for them to be there. The guy got off, but then you've got another case where no drugs were found in a house and a guy opened fired on armed people breaking into his fucking place and now he's on death row for capital murder yeah, for firing on police officers and killing one guy. Well, that's the thing. I, I, I just, where they found no drugs in his house no, whatsoever. And that's the thing. It happened to probably be in a state where they you said can't he was, fire upon... They said he was a weed dealer, too. So that's they're doing that for... That, see, that's the thing that I, 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 I... It doesn't... You know, I get that... I, you know, I get drug dealers are... That they're a problem, but what they whatever they're doing with the drugs, I know they, they take forever them. to get you your drugs. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you just, but no, the police, whatever they do after they seize the drugs, if they do happen to find it, it 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 just goes back into the community. It's not something that gets destroyed. 
And that's yeah. the thing. I mean, like, that's just, I mean, conspiracy theory, theories, you know, whatnot. But, I mean, they're, suppl- they, they're supplying it. They make money, and, yeah. and that's that's the whole, the whole deal. And why people don't get in trouble is because they do have all the power. It's scary. I don't, it bothers me, especially, I mean, I'd rather hear of someone killing a police officer on something like that than a police officer, police officer killing a person. Oh, I no think, reason. I think if you're, de- you know, if you're doing nothing wrong and somebody breaks down your door with a weapon, you're, you're do- you what do you do? Lay right over, you know, yourself. bend over and let them, you know, do, you have do no idea. I- honestly, like no. it's a lot of, a lot of those SWAT teams I've seen, they don't wear a lot of insignia that says that b- clearly says what they are. Either that or it's on the back. You know, and and people don't, you know, yeah. backpedal into a house to to raid it, but you know, I think these two these two bills that are going into Congress to try to federally legalize weed is going to be a big part of. You won't have you know people raiding because they're dealing weed, you know, kind of thing, uh, as much. I'm yeah. sure they'll still find a way to to stick it to people, but well, you mean, know, that's all there is to it. Is it is it just this war on drugs thing is has it's a sir. killed more people than it's not killed people, you know. <laughs> and that's and it's just words, it's fancy words to say to get people a war on drugs, you know. It's just like the war in Afghanistan or the war in Iraq or the yeah. Gulf War. You know, all that it's just like there's war going on constantly all the time. It's just you got to put a name behind something. And and if you people... make it sound scary cuz you have to have well, the war on ISIS is because mm-hmm. That ISIS is scary. The war on drugs, because and it's like why always, it, it, it's always something new pops up. Yeah, it's something new every time, and it's like, oh well, we can't go back to Al Qaeda. We pretty much took care of them. Yeah, and uh, you know the worst thing that happens when you when you smoke a little weed, you fucking double wash your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> you take you take clean clothes out of the dryer. You put the clothes from the washer into the dryer, and then you take those clean clothes. Throw them back in the washer and put laundry soap on it. I have to probably start watching what I say on this. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a possibility. I don't know. Well, not that I mean, I mean anything. Anything I talk about has been in the past. So, yeah. I mean, I guess that's fine. But Yeah, we do have to a, clearly state that all of these stories yes, happened uh, prior to. <laughs> prior to the date of. No, anyways, I just, you know, I just, I don't want to, On for personal reasons, you know, I don't want to give, I don't want to. I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah, any more than I already am. <laughs> and and you know, once they got you into the system, which is uh-huh. the 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 thing is to get the hooks in you. Yeah. You know, and um, that's all there is. But yeah. Well, um, you know, that's that's it for the cave cast for today, episode thirty six. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to say yet again, rest in power to Jerome Kersey. Um, it's real sad. Sad week part for that, part of the soul of that team. Yeah, for Blazers fans and died a little um, bit. Basketball fans alike. It's uh, it's sad, Good man, person. and and that's the age we're getting to. We're gonna just start watching people watching people drop, and and that, and that's just part of life. But that's crazy. Um, we think fifty two is early. Yeah. Now when we used to think, you know, that was. I mean, when I was fifteen. You know, well, I, I used to want to be six foot eight, and. Uh, <laughs> You know they. It's, yeah. I don't really. I like kinda, my. I like my kind of rough being. Statue. It's kind of rough being a big guy, but yep. yeah. Um, Stature. You know. Uh, feel for feel for the family and the organization. I'm sure. I'm sure it's real sad for everybody. tonight. Tonight's the. They're gonna have a Aaron Aflalo debut. He comes back in. And Jerome I, Kersey I tribute. I guarantee. Yeah, before yeah. the game or at halftime, they have a Jerome Kersey tribute. <clears throat> Speaking of, I gotta figure out what time that game comes. Yeah, out. Um, <laughs> and plus we gotta watch uh, Frank Mir knock out oh, Bigfoot crap. Silva too. So, anyways, that's a Cave Cast for today. Thanks for listening. Um, go to Cave Music Productions dot Bandcamp dot com. Download my mixtape and um, Monkus CMP at Twitter. I mean, that's yeah. not really. I don't do much on that. I need at, to do a little bit more, but yeah. At go Monkus to our CMP Cave Music, our Cave Music Facebook. Yes, Facebook.com uh, slash Cave Music Productions. Go like it. We're almost to 100 likes. I'd really like to get to that three digits. <laughs> to three digits and beyond. I mean, but 89, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with it for now. 
We'll probably hopefully get a little more. Uh, March 11th, we are playing in Eugene. Lucky's in Eugene, private stock, Wednesday, March 11th. Come out for that, or tell a buddy that might be in Eugene that wants to come down for a sick show. They always put together the architects. They always have dope MCs there. It's not like the shows we used to do where you just have a mix and match of all different kinds of shit rappers and, and good rappers, you know. But uh, Good talent. But they, yeah, these guys, Great you know, they... They're they're straight up rappers. They're they're MCs and and they do a good job and uh, and they're uh, you know they they must have a, a real good eye for talent too. So, um, anyways, yeah, go to that, check it out, tell a friend about it if you got friends in Eugene. Would really like to pack that place out with cave music fans. Get in where you fit in. Get a, get the the two of them that there are. <laughs> Just forget I said that. Song of the week is. Uh, Guy Davis, somebody tell me where the road is. Um, it's out front. <laughs> my bad. No, no reason for it. I just, I just really like the song by this uh, Guy Davis, good bluesman, good uh, bluesman, guitar playerman. Um, but that's it. Yes, the song of the day. And thanks for listening. Tell your moms we said hello. I never had no ticket, just a song and a smile And all along the way I played the blues on my guitar I met women in big cities I got drunk in every bar Can anybody tell me where the road is? I'm just trying to find my way back home Can anybody tell me where the road is? I'm just trying to find my way back home I bought cocaine in California Well, I sold it to a judge I asked him to go easy But his honor wouldn't budge Well, he couldn't catch me running, Lord I left it all behind The need for getting high It was all in my mind Can anybody tell me where the road is? I'm just trying to find my way back home Can anybody tell me where the road is? I'm just trying to find my way back home When I was young I always swore I'd live with no regrets I found out later Father Time wasn't taking any bets well, I took a vow up north and then I met a girl down south The promises I made turned to dust inside my mouth Can anybody tell me where the road is? I'm just trying to find my way back home Well, can anybody tell me where the road is? I'm just trying to find my way back home Called up north to talk to her, she told me to wait I could hear the children crying, Lord, I knew it was too late I cursed my faith loudly, and I swore there was no God But leaving town is easy, it's staying home that's hard Can anybody tell me where the road is? I'm just trying to find my way way blind past all the bridges that I burned. I'm telling everybody all the lessons that I learned. I'm heading back for home, that is if it still exists. I've got to try to find all the years that I missed. Can anybody
Everybody tell me where the road is I'm just trying to find my way back home Can anybody tell me where the road is I'm just trying to find my way back home Can anybody tell me where the road is I'm just trying to find my way Find my way back home Trying to find my way back home